Pre-colonial Rwanda was characterized by a centralized kingdom ruled by kings. This episode of Doing Business in Rwanda will take you back in time and explore the kings of old, their rule, and their lifestyle. I'm your host, Tessie Carvin. Once known as the royal capital, Nyanza was the seat of the former Rwandan monarchy. In order to preserve its rich history, the Rwandan government reconstructed the traditional royal residence and turned it into a museum. For anyone interested in learning about Rwanda's history, the King's Palace is a great place to start. Uh, Nyanza used to be the royal capital of Rwanda from the uh, end of 19th century up to 1961. So this place, you know, uh, this hill, uh, which is called uh, Rukari, the second last king of Rwanda used to live here. He was staying on this, on this hill. There is more than a pass. I mean, you get, you know, opportunity to, to visit the place. It's where, you know, the, the, last, the second last king of Rwanda Motala III Rudahigwa used to stay in that uh, palace. That is why the government of Rwanda decided, you know, to, you know, to keep this place. Uh, unfortunately, when the king uh, died in 1959, then after uh, Kaibandi's regime, you know, abandoned this place, you know, was uh, no any significance you know, during the First and the Second Republic. It's just after 1994, 1994 uh, genocide against Tutsi aftermath of that period, the government of Rwanda decided you know, to transform this place into a museum. This place, first of all, has a history about our monarchs. So basically, if you want to learn the way of the people, how people are, who the people are, you must definitely learn about their culture. So where else should you start? You must definitely start about their leaders. Who are the leaders? How did they lead? How did they go about their daily lives? How were they kind of like adored or kind of like seen in, uh, in a setting of like a lifestyle in general? So this place is very, very important because it gives you a vast knowledge about kings and in relation to the, the people. So their leaders definitely but still, how they related to the people in general. The traditional king's palace was an intricately thatched, strong, beehive-shaped structure that caught the attention of everyone who came across it. So beautiful was the structure that the modern-day Kigali Convention Center is designed after it. So this structure is actually it's a replica from, uh, from the original. So they had to look at the original then reconstruct it something that really looked like it. So first of all, how we lost our original uh, palace, it was around the time of the Belgians in Rwanda, when they kind of like wanted to change the system from monarchs to presidents. So mostly we ended up losing our kings and definitely we lost uh, the king's home because it was dismantled and where it, was, it used to be built, yeah, there the are schools around and churches built around that premise. So this is kind of like uh, reconstructing it to, to an original kind of like, nearly like original state in general. So this is a beautiful structure, I can, I can tell you that. So it's, it's, uh, it's made of like uh, raw materials, like uh, it's, it's, it's grass basically, it's bamboo, it's papyrus, so it's different kind of like materials that are raw, grown in Rwanda, that make up this beautiful palace. Most of uh, young, you know, Rwandans who come here, first of all, they were very, very excited to see a traditional house, this one, like this one. They were really impressed, you know, by the, the structure, the techniques, you know, the Rwandan had, you know, to construct a, a traditional house li like, like this one. Also, even the modern uh, palace, they, they don't, you know, understand how, you know, in 1930s, you know, the king could live in a modern house like that one. So also the story, you know, behind, you know, this house, you know, because, you know, we showcase, you know, different activities, you know, performed 
at King's Palace, you know, that, during that period. So the young, you know, Rwandans, you know, they really appreciate, you know, to learn all those activities, you know, performed at King's Palace. The King's Palace is full of royal symbols. The royal drum, for example, was an important symbol of power. So the, the, the most important symbol, actually, like the symbols of power, used to be the royal drums. So the drums, more or less like it is, uh, we share it within the East African community. The drums were the symbols of power. So they had made up like drums uh, called Ingoma, Ngabe. So those were the symbols of power. So that was his power. And those drums were always like heavily secured in the back of the palace in general. Meaning, if let's say an opposing kingdom attacked this king and was able to abduct that drum, that meant that the reigning king had lost his power. So the drums were the most teams of power. Let us consider them like flags in the ancient GIA. So the drums were the symbols of power. The elegant, long-horned Inyambo cows are a stunning sight at the king's palace. The unique cows from the Ankole breed played an important role during ceremonies in honor of the king. Today, the magnificent cows are a favorite with tourists. In our traditional Rwandan culture, the Inyambo cows were for the delight and pleasure of the king and his visitors. Today, as we care for these cows, we are preserving our culture. Uh, we get many tourists who come to see these Inyambo cows and are so fascinated by them that they spread the world around and turn. We get even more visitors. So cows, first of all, cows are like, the, the, apart from the royal cows, who are more or less seen as like sacred symbols around the king's court. Cows were looked at in, in terms of like money. We never had any currencies. So cows would be the wealth of the kingdom. That is why we'll, we, we, later on we, we're going to see the kings that were named after cows, like the Mutara. That is basically a shepherd kind of king. And the one that really uh, emphasized uh, uh, increment of cows in general. So cows are symbols of, of like wealth, in terms of like wealth, prestige, and power. Moving on, on to other things, uh, you talked about marriages. Cows would really, it was the first gift actually. When you talked about like exchanging gifts from the, the bride, the, the bride to, the, to the bridegroom, two families had to exchange gifts. And what would they exchange? Definitely not gods, but wonderful cows, definitely. So cows would really seen as like that expensive gift you give to someone that really, uh, first of all, respect, appreciate, and love. The popular, beautiful, and graceful traditional dance performed by Rwandan women symbolizes the Inyambo cows. <laughs> So we have a specific dance actually that comes from specifically these royal cows. So mostly it is performed by women. So specifically when they are dancing, they don't like seek to always like portray the beauty of the long horn cows. Thus raising their arms and dancing in a specific way, kind of like to showcasing the, the long horn kind of like cow. So the dance also comes from these beautiful majestic creatures also. In the 1930s, a modern palace was built and the second last king of Rwanda, Mutara III Rudahigwa, resided in it. So this is the, the modern palace, the king's modern palace. So the, the one that stayed in this palace is the uh, second last king. It was called Mutara III Rudahigwa. So this is Rudahigwa's palace. So this is where he stayed actually from around like 1931. Uh, till 1959 when he passed away in Burundi. So this is where kind of like mostly like uh, his life 
uh, will kind of like he stayed around this kind of structure. This was built in 1932. So from 31 till, so I think this, the construction like started around like 31, but him actually staying in this palace was around like 1932 till all the way 1959. The last queen of Rwanda also lived in this modern palace until she was evicted. So the queen was called uh, Jichanda, Rosaria Jichanda. So I think we, she's uh, the last queen of Rwanda. Yeah. So the queen stayed around this place from around like, uh, by the time he passed away, the husband passed away in 1959, the king. So she stays around this place from 59 till 1963. So the queen was served letters of eviction, telling her that he was supposed to vacate this place. And later on she goes to, to a place called Butari. Today it's called Huye. So that is where she lived until she was killed in the 1994 genocide against a Tutsi. And actually we always commemorate uh, her in this place every 20th of April. The King's Palace Museum Gallery is one of the eight museums that make up the Institute of National Museums of Rwanda. Now the next time you are in Rwanda, make sure the museums are part of your itinerary for a deep dive into Rwanda's rich history. Thank you for watching this edition of Doing Business in Rwanda. Until next time, bye for now.